Welcome to week eight of Explore the Bible. Today we're in Acts chapter 18, finishing up some of Paul's time here in Greece. Exciting passages. We're going to Corinth now. So we've been in Philippi, Thessaloniki, Berea, down to Athens, now over to Corinth. And so looking forward to taking you through this. Corinth's a great city. Uh, ancient city's great. Um, anyway, before we go in the passage, like, hit the like button, thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe. If you've got a comment, question, uh, whatever, you want to tell us where you're watching from, put that in there and share the video with somebody if you would. Now go to give.exposedtochrist.com, see it down in the, in the description, and you can uh, contribute to our ministry. All right, here we go. Acts 18. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth, where he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul came to them, and since they were of the same occupation, tent makers by trade, he stayed with them and worked. He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade both Jews and Greeks. Okay, so he goes to Corinth. It's not far. It's about 70, 60, 70 miles or so from Athens. Right? He finds Aquila and Priscilla. They are tent makers by trade. Paul also is a tent maker, so he worked with them, Right, spent some time there. Made some money, made had some income, kind of took care of himself. Of course, he got to visit with Aquila and Priscilla, who become believers and very important believers in the life of the new church, right? And um, he's going to the synagogue. So we have a synagogue here in Corinth where he can go and talk with them, right? And he tries to persuade Jews and Greeks. You know, there were Greeks who went to the synagogue as well. Uh, they Not all of them converted necessarily to Judaism, but they were in the synagogue and allowed to have a place there and he would spend time speaking with them. This was Paul's regular way of doing things. Now you need to know this about Corinth. Corinth is a pagan city. This is the temple to Zeus here in Corinth. It is a pagan city. It's a place where they would pull boats out of the water on one side, take them to the other side where they didn't have to go all the way around. Uh, the, I think it's called an isthmus, right? They didn't have to go all the way around. It was about two miles across there. So when the sailors would get out of the boat and wait for it to be dragged across uh, to the other side, they would go into Corinth and act like sailors. Let's just say it like that. It's an evil pagan place where pagan people act like pagans. But there were Jews there, right? So then here comes Silas and Timothy. They come. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself to preaching the word and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. So Silas and Timothy show up, and Paul now, maybe they bring money with them, they bring they raise some funds, maybe they go to work, whatever it is, but Paul gets devoted to the preaching, right? Telling Jews Jesus is the Messiah. This was his message. He never left the gospel, right? When they resisted, ultimately they resisted and they blasphemed, which they would say he was blaspheming, but he would say, truthfully, you are because you have rejected Christ as the Son of God. He shook out his clothes and told them, your blood is on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. I am done, he says. Your blood is on your own heads. This comes right out of Ezekiel 33, um, the uh, um, passage where uh, the Lord sets Ezekiel as a watchman over the city, right? And you've got to share, and if they listen... They'll be saved, but if they hear you and don't listen, then their blood is on their own heads. Paul says, I told you, I am innocent now. I've done what I had to do. I'm going to the Gentiles. And there were plenty of Gentiles in Corinth. So he left there and went to the house of a man named uh, Titius Justus, a great uh, Latin uh, Roman name, right? A worshiper of God whose house was next door to the synagogue. You got to love that, right? Paul says, fine, I'm done. I'm not coming back. Uh, I'm going to go somewhere where I'm welcome. Happens to be next door, this guy, Titius Justus, who is a, a Roman, clearly a Roman, a Greek. He welcomes, and you can, well, we can meet in my house. He says, okay, we'll go to his house. <laughs> That's awesome, right? But then check this out. Crispus, who is the leader of the synagogue, he's the leader of the synagogue. He believed in the Lord, along with his whole household and many of the Corinthians. When they heard, they believed and were baptized. People are getting saved, including the leader of the synagogue. He goes next door and starts meeting with Paul and Titius Justice. How about that? Now, check this. The Lord said to Paul in a night vision, Don't be afraid, but keep on speaking and don't be silent. 
For I am with you, and no one will lay a hand on you to hurt you, because I have many people in this city. He stayed there a year and a half, teaching the word of God among them. About that, in a vision, the Lord speaks to Paul and says, you don't, you don't be afraid. You keep speaking. Don't be silent. You hear he's telling him, opposition's coming. Don't shut up. The Lord says, no one's going to lay a hand on you. Here's a promise he has from the Lord. He says, I have many people in this city. People were getting saved in that city, including the leader of the synagogue, right? And he stayed there for a year and a half. He stayed 18 months teaching and preaching in Corinth. This is not Paul's normal way of doing it, right? Again, we, we've talked about this several times, but God put Paul in a different place under different circumstances and was continually putting him where he had to adjust to what the Lord wanted him to do. And Paul had to be willing to let go of his own patterns, his own habits, and adopt what the Lord had given him to do. So he stayed there a year and a half. Opposition came. They tried to run him out. The new leader of the synagogue tried to get Paul run out of town. Didn't work. Paul even didn't even have a chance to speak. Read the whole chapter. It's awesome. Paul didn't even get to speak. Right? When he wanted to defend himself, the proconsul, uh, the Roman proconsul, defended Paul. After staying for some time, Paul said farewell to the brothers and sisters and sailed away to Syria. He went to Syria, sailed away back where he had come from, basically accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. He shaved his head at Sincre because of a vow he had taken. This is uh, the village. I don't know, it may be hard to see. Maybe I'll, I'll put it on as a slide. But right out here, this is the um, remnants of the boat dock where the boats would come the ships would come in there at Sincre where Paul cut his hair when they reached Ephesus he left them there but he himself entered the synagogue and debated with the Jews when they asked him to stay for a longer time he declined but he said farewell and added I'll come back to you again if God wills then he set sail from Ephesus so he went to Ephesus you know if you go back Remember that Paul was wanting to go to Ephesus early on. The Lord wouldn't let him. The Lord prevented him. The spirit of Jesus would not let him go. But now he, he got to go back and he spent some time there in the synagogue, right? And he debated with the Jews. He didn't get to preach. He was debating, right? He's trying to, to share the gospel there. And they asked him to stay for a longer time, but he said, I can't, but I'll come back. And he does. And he sets sail. He is going on. Paul was always being obedient to God. And it was so interesting how... The Lord worked in his life and did things differently. He didn't do it the same all the time. And I think we really need to adjust to that thinking, right? It's not always going to be the same. The story in Corinth is a great story of how God moved in Paul and moved in that city. That city was evil. Read that. Read. It was hard. That was a hard church. Read 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. It was a hard church. Paul spent a year and a half there and, and they didn't always... Uh, not everything they did were things he told them to do. Let's put it that way, okay? They didn't always honor the teaching. They did. They were lost, man. And they were in church, but they were lost. Many of them came from such a pagan background. It was hard for them. Uh, these, you know, sailors and all this, all of this uh, uh, influence of prostitution and everything at the temple and all of that, it was hard. Um, but God moved in a great way there. And so I think helps us maybe to see how the lost world is, and it certainly helps us to see how Paul responds to that and how God moves and how God changes Paul's call, uh, his not his call, changes his methodology, his strategy. And Paul is just willing to, okay, we need to have a different strategy. We'll have a different strategy. Hey, thanks for watching. We're continuing in Acts next week, so don't miss it. We'll see you then.